Hey everybody, it's Paul. Welcome back to my channel, reporting live from my sofa. I hope that everybody is having an amazing weekend. If you're in the way of these storms that are coming to kind of like the southeastern area, I hope you're staying safe. I hope you're taking precautions. We might be on the move here and we might have some regularly scheduled programming disruptions this week uh, because right now the storms are coming up towards North Carolina. So we're kind of waiting to see what's going to take place and we're going to make that call I'm thinking Tuesday or Wednesday uh, because basically as it stands right now if it, the storm does what it says it's going to do we're going to have to leave where we're at. So we shall see. Today I wanted to go over some basics about a new case that we're going to be following here at the Sofa Squad. Uh, now, this case has been going on for a couple of years now, and it is finally coming to trial this week, September 3rd, they begin jury selection. Now, if you follow me here at the Sofa Squad, you know that some of these cases that are like really deep or whatever, like I'll do an overview video in that type situation. So this case, I've been going down the rabbit hole and it is so intense and there's so many little left-hand turns and this, that, and the other that I was like, we're gonna have to rein it in some here. So I'm just kind of making this top five need to know list video here uh, and I'm also going to go over some questions that I really have and that I want to see answered in the trial. Uh, now that being said, I'm not the end all be all for this case at all. I mean y'all, I'm not joking. This You can just keep going and going and going. There's so many different avenues you can take. So that being said, without further ado, let's review. So, number five, who is Brooke Schuyler Richardson? Now, Brooke Schuyler Richardson, she goes by Schuyler to basically people that know her really closely. She's 20 years old now. Uh, she's from Carlisle's, Ohio, and she lives with her parents and her brother there. And she was turning 18 during the time of this incident. Uh, she was a cheerleader at her high school. She was scheduled to go to the University of Cincinnati, where she's going to study, I believe, psychology. And for the most part, she was like any other teen. I mean, she even worked with kids at like the daycare at YMCA, I believe. Uh, now, she did have some eating disorders, and we're going to go over that later because it's going to play a role in this, I think. So let's go on to the next one. Number four, what is she accused of? So just days after prom, prosecutors allege that Skylar gave birth to a baby, deliberately killed it, and buried it in the backyard. There is some talks about having burned the corpse, and that's going to be an issue that we're going to go over here in just a minute. So the charges against her are gross abuse of a corpse, aggravated murder, involuntary manslaughter, endangering children, and tampering with evidence. So she's got a, a huge stack going against her right now. Uh, she could be facing the rest of her life in prison with these charges. So these are nothing to scoff at. Uh, let's keep going on now. So number three is going to be a major one. How did she get caught? So this one's complicated. She went to her first OBGYN appointment, and during that appointment is when she finds out that she's pregnant. Now her her mother apparently like took her to the appointment her mother's out in the waiting room and now we're gonna go ahead and slap allegedly on a lot of this stuff because this is one of the questions that I'm like I, I've got some questions about this and I'll get to those at the end of the video but just you know allegedly so the family alleges that Skylar you know went to the doctor and it was basically like look you know she was getting a prescription for birth control and she's like my mom's in the waiting room and she is expecting a, you know she is expecting this prescription so just give me the prescription so that I can you know have time to adjust whatever the doctor allegedly writes the script for her Skylar goes on her way yada 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 she goes to the prom she keeps going about well then she has a follow-up appointment and she sees like another doctor there and basically they look at the chart and they're like well what happened with the pregnancy and at this point allegedly Skylar breaks down and it's like oh my gosh and kind of says like what happened like I had a stillbirth and I buried her in the backyard and so on and so forth. So on July 20th, 2017, this doctor called in the tip to the police about like a patient having uh, a, a stillborn child and that kicked off everything. Number two, the body may have or may not have been burned. This is a huge thing with this. And again, it's one of the questions that I'm just like, I, I really want to hear from the horse's mouth on this. So essentially what happened is at first, 
uh, a forensic anthropologist, Dr. Elizabeth Murray, uh, she initially claimed that the, the bones had been charred. So basically it looked like Skylar gave birth, she killed the child and burned the body and buried it in the backyard. Well then later she basically recanted that and says no, I don't believe the body was burned. So there's other layers to that, but I don't want to go into it here because it's it, it's so contorted and the rabbit hole so deep and we're getting ready to hear it hopefully, you know, on the stand. So I want to wait to hear from that. But obviously, you know, if you're the defense, you're just like, I mean, it sounds really grisly, I'll just be honest. I mean, when you start talking about she she burned this newborn baby's body, I mean, that's very chainsaw massacre-y. It's very grisly. So the defense actually tried having the case dismissed once that statement was recanted. And obviously it didn't happen. The case is still going forth. So, but the defense isn't happy about that. So obviously. So let's go on to the last one. So number one, the huge question, why did she do it? We're going to give two versions here. And again, one of them is through the family. One of them is through the state. And somewhere in between probably lies the truth. So the first one is we're going to go with what the family's saying. And essentially her family and friends and stuff. And they're essentially saying that she gave birth to this baby. Uh, she was waiting for it to make some signs of life. That didn't happen. And she was basically afraid to disappoint her family, her friends, all these people. So she went and buried the baby in the backyard and kind of went on her way. Now, I have lots of questions if that's the case. And again, we'll get to the questions in a second. The prosecutors are essentially saying that Skylar was 18. She had just graduated. She was going to University of Cincinnati. You know, and the image was a huge thing for her and her family. And so that essentially she didn't want to have this kid and made that very clear to the doctor and so they're saying you know no she had the kid she the kid was alive it wasn't stillborn she killed it disposed of the body because essentially it was an image thing and she wanted to be a footloose and fancy free 18 year old so uh, that being said those are the top five things right there now again there is so much more i mean you just need to go google this y'all and you will see tons of articles on it if you want to get in more in depth with it but for me those were like some of the top things to go into the case with so let's talk about some of the questions that i have right off the rip on this and uh, in what I hope to say. Number one, what was said at the doctor's office? Because let's just walk through this for a second. So, uh, you know, she goes to the doctor's office, doesn't know she's pregnant. It's her first OBGYN. And she goes in there and the doctor does a urine test and is like, you're pregnant. And I, I can't remember right now, but I think it was like 32 weeks. I mean, it was very almost to term kind of a thing. I mean, she was very deep into the pregnancy. So there's that. So here's some questions. Now, first of all, I'm not going to even try and pretend that I know what it's like to be pregnant or any of that stuff. I have no clue, obviously. So I've talked to numerous people, but I also don't want to be that guy that's like, well, I talked to a few girls and they said this. I don't know what that's like. So I can't speak to that. I do obviously have the question of, well, how would you not know that you're pregnant when you've carried the baby to that full term? You know, I, I mean, that's an obvious question. So ladies, if you have an experience like that or whatever, absolutely drop it in the comments because I find it interesting because we've seen, we've seen the talk shows about, I didn't know I was pregnant. So that's fine and dandy if that is a possibility. So she goes to the doctor, she finds out she's pregnant. So number one, did the doctor really write her a script like that? Can the doctor get in trouble for doing that? So then you go home and I guess this is what I'm confused on. So there's no follow up. There's no, I mean, nothing allegedly. There's just like the next thing we know is she, it's, you know, she has a baby after prom. So to me, what happens there is, and I don't know if this is the right word, but I'm going to say premeditation, because allegedly the doctor's saying that she made it very clear she didn't want this kid and da 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 And, you know, if you don't want the child, whatever, there's obviously so many other things you can do. But if you leave the doctor's office and you don't say anything to your parents, you don't say anything to anybody else, and you just kind of tuck it under the carpet, I mean, it's almost like, what did you think was going to happen? You know, and maybe hindsight at this point, she knows, whatever, I don't know. So that just brings a bunch of questions to me, like, well, what, okay, I can understand we've all been teenagers at some point most likely and i get the sense of oh i don't want mom and dad to find out fill in the blank this is something where i'm like uh, that's kind of hard to hide you know once you have the baby so part of me is like okay so you go you have the child that night 
let's say the baby was not born, stillborn, were you just going to go, like, wake your parents up and be like, Mom, Dad, oh, by the way, I just had a kid? I mean, can you imagine? You know, so there's that. It just has so many questions. So to me, the doctor, I want to know what that doctor is going to say. Now, the doctor is allegedly going to be testifying, and so that's going to be a huge thing to me. For me, if the doctor gets up there and it's all like, you know, oh, she went on and on and on and on and on about how much she didn't want this kid and her life was over, it's not going to be a good look. But even if the doctor got up there and said, no, I just gave her the things and she went on her way, I still have just as many questions. It doesn't really make it any better for me. The next thing is, did she burn the body? Why do I want to know that? Well, because, again, it takes it from being a horrible situation to, like, a Chainsaw Massacre-type level situation. I mean, the idea of that, I'm like, you know, and uh, another thing, and see, you can see I'm kind of going off on my little tangents here or whatever, but that's fine for this part of the video. So, another thing is that, like, they wanted to bring the jury to see the house, I guess, so you could see the layout. Because one thing that everybody's like, how did this girl have a, a baby in the house? with her family, go out and bury it, and nobody know. You know, like, how did that even happen? And I, I'm curious, too. Um, I wish that, that, I can't wait to see pictures and layouts of the house, because the little bit that I've seen and whatnot, I'm like, okay, well, the area that was buried in is kind of back some, there's that. So part of me is just like, well, where could she have set it on fire? I want to hear from the medical examiner exactly what they have to say about that. Why did they think the body was burnt at first? And why did they say it wasn't later? Because that's going to be big for me. Either way, it's awful. Okay, so now remember how I said earlier when I was describing like what type of person she was and that she had some issues with eating disorders and whatnot. Okay, so here's the drill. Because a lot of things are like... There's the whole how did she not personally know she was pregnant thing, but then there's like, well, how did other people not know? Because if you Google her images and stuff, and you see her prom dress, for example, like to, to people who don't know her at all, it's like, uh, she's obviously pregnant. I mean, she has a, a baby bump in the whole nine yards. What they're claiming, the family and everybody, is saying that she had these eating disorders and that... Basically, they thought, oh, wow, she's eating again. She's gaining weight. This is good. We don't really want to say anything because we don't want to set her off. You know, so we just thought that she looked good type situation. Like, she was doing what she needed to do. So, again, I have not had personal experience with e people with eating disorders. So, I can understand just on other things the aspect of if that allegedly is what happened. And they're like, that's how it slipped by us, yada, yada, yada then I'm like, okay, I understand not wanting to set someone off or say the wrong thing, so you kind of walk around eggshells. But then I guess my, some of my questions are, like, for example, the prom dress. I'm like, don't you pick those out, like, early and you have it fitted? Because I'm looking at that, and I'm like, wouldn't she have had to had that re, like, let out or something like that? It, that part really confused me. Maybe she went and did it without people knowing. Maybe I don't know what it's like to buy a prom dress. That could be it, too. <laughs> so I have lots of questions about that, though. So uh, the last little rabbit hole with it that I want to go down is just the aspect. And I, I've touched on this already, but I, I want to leave this video with this thought. Is I guess I just keep coming back to what was she thinking about doing? You know, because for me, it looks like this. For me, it looks like... You know, okay, you went to the doctor, you found out you're pregnant, may or may not have said some damaging stuff there, you leave, you go home, you don't say a word about it. So you know you're going to have the child at some point. If that's really what you're trying to say is, look, I gave birth to a stillborn child, I was afraid to tell my parents and let people down, yada, 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 so I buried the child in the backyard. First of all, can you imagine carrying that around in your head for the rest of your life that your firstborn baby is in your parents' backyard. I'm sure it would have been found the remains at some point. I mean, I just don't know how that could be. But um, I guess my next question is, well, what what's going on in that household that you don't feel comfortable enough to go to your parents? And I understand parent, parental disappointment. I mean, that's some strong sauce right there. I get it. I've been there, done that. But there's some things that I'm like, you just got to, I mean, you can't get past that. You know what I mean? Like, giving birth to another human being, you're going to have to get past that and suck it up and be like, 
you know, this is what happened. So I guess that that would be my next question. Like, well, if, if pretend that we that we all watch the trial that goes up there, they prove without a shadow of a doubt. Nope, she it was a stillborn child, and she was just nervous. You know, she didn't want to talk about it. So first and foremost, I think that you can still be, you know, held accountable. For, I mean, that's not really right. You know what I'm saying? So there's going to be charges that she's still going to get hit with, in my opinion. But then my next question is, well, what's going in that household that to the point that you can't go to your parents with that, take out, disappointing them, all that. I mean, this is major, you know, and if it turns to, does turn out that there was, that the baby was born living and that, you know, not great things were done to the child, even more so, that was worth, you know what I mean? Like another human life was worth avoiding this over here, which was either public scrutiny, disappointing your parents, mom and dad getting mad, whatever. So that's it. I could sit here and keep talking and going on and on. So what we're going to be doing is this. We're going to be following this trial here at the Sofa Squad. And I, I'm going to do my little daily commentaries, things of that nature. Now, like I said, if the tornado, if the tornado, if the hurricane comes here, obviously there's going to be a chill pill. So just hang tight. Um, but if you want to watch this along with me, I'd love for you to. I appreciate you hanging out with me today. And uh, that's it. I will talk to you all soon. Bye.